Welcome back to the Inkwell movie review series, Love It, Hate It. Today we're going to discuss The Debt. Um, first off, um, this is directed by John Madden, and it's based off of a, another film, a foreign film, um, called something. Um, I, don't, I forgot what it's called, but so this is already based off of other material. And overall, it's, uh, it's a movie that's very tense, very suspenseful, and that's really what the drive is. It's not about visual effects or anything. It's basically of how nervous, how anxious can we get the viewers uh, and the sitting in the theaters? How can we get them to feel? And I think overall, it did a and it did an okay job. Oh, but yeah. what did you think? Well, I mean, it's hard for me to talk about this movie without talking about the expectations I had for it. Like the first thing that caught my eye about this movie was the screenplay was by Matthew Vaughn, a person who I've yeah. come to really enjoy with last years with his films like Kick Ass and X Men First Class. But mm -hmm. uh, from what I could gather with the trailers, I was expecting this to be a um, like a sort of cross or like mesh between the films Munich and Inglorious Bastards. So I was a little surprised when I saw this movie and it turned out it was more of just Munich and and then the rest of the movie goes No, but on. it reminded me of that movie, the one with, uh, it, it reminded me of the movie with Eric Bana and Daniel Craig and they were the, you know, they were Jews who went over and were trying to get the people who bombed. Wait a minute, that was Munich. Okay, no, this is Munich. Yeah. This is, all of this is Munich. Yeah. It's, that's a particularly what it is. And it's not directed by Steven Spielberg, which means it's not as awesome. Well, um, I mean, yeah. It's, it, it really doesn't have, bring anything original, which is my complaint. If I had one singular complaint, it'd be that it's, it's a movie that feels very repetitive. It doesn't bring anything yeah. new to a genre that it's kind of old. And you see a lot of other films. To me, it, it's, there, do, there aren't any major action sequences which is good. It's a very, it's pure story. It doesn't rely yeah. on visual effects or action or anything of that sort. It's all story. And in order to be invested in the story, you have to be invested in the characters. And you have two groups of characters. You have uh, the flashback scenes, which are in, Like in the 1960s and the uh, present, which is 1997. Right. And so you're kind of rooting for two different, even though there's the, the three main characters, you mm -hmm. are rooting for them kind of by, you know, uh, two sets of different actors. And I think one thing that's kind of a disadvantage of the, uh, of the actors in 97, which are great actors, Helen right. Mirren, Tom Wilkinson, and Syrian Hines, who was also in Munich. <laughs> They're all great actors, but the problem is, is that they simply don't have as much to do as, you know, as the actors in the flashback sequences. The flashback sequences, they feel driven. They feel very, very uh, on point. They knows where they want to go. It's very intense. All the intense and susp suspenseful scenes are in the flashbacks. So that by the time you get to 1997, it's very... Yeah, I mean, it's, we're talking about like the uh, almost all the ending of the movie, the last 30 minutes or so, the last 45 minutes is all 1997. It's all mm -hmm. present day. That's when all of it is taking place. And I have to admit, there it did seem the, the story, they kind of added this rushed feeling to it. Like, yeah. the film itself wasn't rushed, but the way the story was coming together at that point, it just seemed like they were kind of throwing things together as quickly as they can to, like, finish up the production. It well, it's kind of like what I was saying earlier, the flashback scenes, I'll say, oh yeah, the 1960s. Everything happening in the 1960s, it knew what it wanted to do, it had it all set up, and it was very, I won't say layered, but I will hmm. say, once again, very driven. It felt, it felt very tight. It knew what it wanted to be, and it, and it flowed very nice. But then in the night, then 1997, it's all of a sudden it lost its purpose, and that's when the film kind of flip-flopped back and forth, forth between uh, great acting, but there's not, yeah. simply not enough going on. You're not invested in these characters. There's not enough tension. And you're kind of wondering where the film is going, and by the time you get to the end, and there's, I won't spoil anything here, mm. you're kind of left unsatisfied. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's just the events of the entire movie leading up to the end that leaves you unsatisfied, or just the rather abruptness of the end. Mm -hmm. like the way it ends, it's, it's a uh, interesting scene happens that you think is like now going to maybe show some sort of epilogue, but then it just fades to white and credits roll. It was, it was just a very sudden ending. Well, even though there are really, I'll say, six characters, even though there are three characters, six mm -hmm. actors, so I will really, there's six different characters. You spend the most time with, I think her name is Rachel, yes. um, the one that Helen Mirren and Jessica Chastain play. And she is the character you spend the most time with. Yeah. And so at the ending, you want to feel, uh, from all that she's been through and the choices that she's had to make, you want closure, and you don't get it. 
I'm not yeah. telling you what happens, and I'm you know either way, but it's just you want closure, and you don't get it, and so that's kind of, I think my main complaint. Mm. It is abrupt, and you want once again that sense of closure. It's very important to film like the dead. Because there's a difference between, you know, having an ambiguous ending. And I'm all for ambiguous endings, oh, yeah. but it just seemed lazy. Well, um, like you said, the 1997 <coughs> teams do seem a bit lazy. Like you said, the uh, 1916, it's quick, it's focused, it's driven. But the pacing parts in the 1997 scenes, it seems right because like the, the uh, present day area of the, at the beginning of the movie, that does also seem like it's going to be focused and be mm -hmm. driven, but then it just kind of, any scene with Helen Mirren in, in the 1997 scenes, it's slow. Which is a shame because she's a great actress. And then it picks up again at the end, but then it's like so fast it just ends out of nowhere. I it's think the main thing that kind of takes me out of it is that I've seen the same story, the same events in so many different movies done better. That it, a movie that, you know, the tension comes from being uncertain about what's about to happen. But yet, it's so predictable, and you give away because they're 1997, the event's happening, that it kind of takes you out of it. It kind of, it really does. However, there are some shocking moments. <laughs> and probably the two things that shocked me the most is, first of all, it's an amazing, <laughs> it's an amazing opening credit sequence. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking <laughs> getting carried away. Yeah. It's, it, 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 that's something. The second thing is, there's one character. Um, and this whole story is about how they're going after the famous, what is he's the... Uh, the, the surgeon of Birkenau. Okay, and he's played by Jesper Christensen. And the thing is, he, his performance is incredible. Hmm. Because he does, he plays this evil sadistic Nazi. Nazi, <laughs> without being a cartoon. And I'm not saying, you know, after 2009's Christoph Waltz and Glorious Bastards, who I, I like to coin the phrase, America's favorite Nazi. <laughs> You know, it's not that good, but the fact that he did it without becoming a cartoon. Hmm. And I, anyway, I thought that the movie, it kind of liked pacing. And overall, it was, it was a good film. It wasn't bad, but I've seen it too many times before. Pacing was a little off. It was back and forth you know, between 1960s and 1997. And you, no closure, and it simply could have been a lot better with such a great cast. Okay. Tell us what you thought. What were your ideas and thinking patterns throughout the rest of the movie? Please tell us in the comments, and thanks for watching. <laughs>